The Royal Academy was formed in 1768 as a society for artists to work together and promote each other's work. Now in their first year, they launched a summer exhibition encouraging absolutely anyone to submit work for public display. These days, around 12,000 people submit work. It's then whittled down by committee to around 4,000 with 1,200 making the final cut. Obviously, because everyone is encouraged to submit work, it means it's a really good gauge of what's going on in the art world. You could potentially spot the next big thing. There's everything from oils to watercolours, photography, sculpture and video work. There's really something for everyone here. Before we came into the exhibition, I was talking about Fiona Ray and how I always loved her work and was looking forward to seeing it and how instantly recognisable it is. But I came into this room and I couldn't actually spot it initially. And then I found this painting here. Obviously, we really used to Fiona Ray's work being ice cream colours, very vivid mirage of colours and this is very different and the strokes are all also a bit more free, a bit more rough, a bit less intricate, less precise so it's very interesting to see this kind of different slant on Fiona Ray's work. I always like coming to exhibitions like this with a group of people because you always learn a lot about the people, things that you maybe didn't know about them, their limits in terms of what is art, their ceiling in terms of the shock factor and pieces like this are always really polarising. You get some people saying how is that art and other people thinking it's fantastic. That is a piece of toast with a painting on it. Some people will love it, other people will hate it but that is the beauty of art for me. Now the Chapman Brothers have been one of my favourites for many years. I'm kind of into things that are slightly creepy, slightly dark and perhaps slightly controversial too. But I know for instance if my parents saw this, they would not be enjoying the views in front of them. But I think, like I said before, it's really good to have these kind of discussions, battle things out and debate things. And I like to feel a bit unsettled when I see art. I like to feel a bit creeped out and Chapman Brothers always deliver that. So this work is by a Turkish artist and it's about a Turkish philanthropist and all the people that he came into contact with during his life. And it's made up of 10,000 LEDs. And for me, it makes me think about passport photos, about missing people files. And I can't help but think about when I went to Ground Zero's museum and saw all of the pictures of the victims there as well. So I think it connotes many different things when you look at it. If you do make it down to the Royal Academy, it's well worth checking out the David Hockney exhibition, 82 portraits and one still life. One of our greatest living artists, Hockney pays tribute to Henri Matisse in a celebration of colour on a massive scale. It's a life affirming and humorous collection that he produced after emerging from a low period in his life. It runs until October the 2nd, so there's plenty of time to catch it. Now, if you're fed up with the British weather this summer and want a taste of tropical heat, give Vamos Cuba a go. Set in Havana's airport, it brings together traditional Cuban dance and more modern styles and features a live band and a DJ. Let's go metal! Yeah! If you're looking for something a little more familiar, then how about our ladies of perpetual succor at the National Theatre? Not only are you representing our ladies, but God himself. We're going mental. It's our choir competition. Following a group of young female friends on the verge of great changes, it's both shocking and sad, funny and uplifting, and set against a soundtrack of 70s classics. It was a sellout during last year's Edinburgh Fringe and opens in London on August the 8th. On a very different note, the Imperial War Museum's First World War Galleries brings the Great War to life for modern audiences. Aimed at a younger audience who are less familiar with the subject than previous generations, it's a highly imaginative exhibition that cleverly recreates the atmosphere of both the trenches and the home front. 
At Tate Modern, Beirut-born Mona Hatoum's sculptures, models and electrical installations are a strange combination of the serene and unsettling. Although her work is inspired by the situation in the Middle East, the themes of war, surveillance and a divided society are familiar to us all. And while that may sound a bit depressing, there's a tranquil beauty to the exhibition. And finally, this summer Liverpool plays host of the biennial. There's a huge range of things to see, with just used buildings and open spaces converted into galleries and exhibition spaces. Liverpool has commissioned 305 new works for the event, with nearly 450 artists exhibiting across the city, with a variety of themes from ancient Greece to monuments from the future, exploring the city's heritage. much for watching a month in the arts now if you'd like to see more videos make sure you press the subscribe button and i'll see you in the next video bye for now